Hey, Allison Verhalen here with AV Writing Services. And today I want to talk to you about how you can get more out of your blog, because if you do it right, blogging can be an incredibly effective way to attract, engage, and convert more leads from your website. So that being said, there's a right way and a wrong way to blog. I see a lot of small business owners who either don't blog or they blog sporadically or they put up a few posts and when they didn't see immediate results, they said, oh, it doesn't work and, and they quit and moved on to something else. When blogging is really a long game, it's something you have to invest in for months, if not up to a year before you really start to see those results. So I am going to go over some of the things that you need to do to blog the right way so that you can get more out of your blog so that you get a return on that investment, whether it's time or whether you're paying someone to do it or a little bit of both. So first of all, why should you be blogging? Because more than 95% of people are using search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo to find small businesses like yours. So if you don't have an online presence, if you don't have a good online presence and an SEO strategy, you are missing out on an opportunity to get in front of 95% of your target audience. Because yes, they are going online. My generation and younger especially, although certainly I know there are people older than I am who are also, their first stop is Google. So if you're not playing by Google's rules, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to get in front of people. Speaking of Google, Google reads your content to get more information to find out about who you are, what your website is all about, so that it can do a better job of pairing you with the right search terms so that it can pair you with the people who are actually looking for you. If you don't have a ton of content on your website, if you don't have all your meta tags and the right keywords, Google is gonna have a harder time categorizing your website and figuring out which searches you belong with. So again, you're not gonna show up in those searches, you're not gonna get in front of your target audience if you don't play by Google's rules. Um, and a blog is a, a great opportunity to get all that content out there, to tell Google and your target audience what you're all about, to get those relevant keywords in there so that Google can index and categorize your content and match you with the right searches. People look for information before they buy products or services, or even if they're looking for information on what a certain product or service is before they even consider buying. So again, your blog is a great way to get that information out there, especially if you're in a professional services industry like financial planning or an attorney. If you're in a B2B industry like myself, same thing. I know that there are people, if they meet me at a networking event and they like what I have to say, they're still gonna go to my blog first and make sure that I really know what I'm talking about before they make that decision to buy from me. Finally, uh, same, Vain, uh, blogging positions you as an expert. Again, people go to my blog to find, to make sure that I really know what I'm talking about, that I really am an expert in my industry. So if, if you don't have a blog, someone else is gonna fill that void. One of your competitors is gonna be blogging and it's gonna answer all your target audience's questions. And they're gonna be like, oh, this person knows what they're doing. I'm gonna buy from them because I have seen the results. I have seen that they know what they're talking about. They've given me all the information I need. They're super helpful. They're the one I'm going to go with. So you're losing out on that opportunity, not only to show up in front of your target audience, but to convert them into customers. So before I go any further, who am I? Why should you care what I have to say? So again, my name is Allison Verhalen, owner and founder of AV Writing Services, LLC. My background is that I have always loved the written word. I majored in English and psychology in college, uh, thought I wanted to work in publishing, graduated in 2009 right after the job market crash, so there were no jobs to be had in publishing or really anywhere else. So, you know, I was in customer service, I you know, was a receptionist, I answered the phone, I, you know, they were jobs, they were not careers. Found myself between jobs at one point and my roommate at the time, her dad, who was an attorney was awesome and offered to give me stuff to do around his office until I got back on my feet. And one of the things he needed was someone to write blog posts for his law firm. He knew that I had a strong writing background and great writing skills. So he offered me the gig and I was more than happy to get paid to write. It was a lifelong dream of mine. So I happily took the gig. I, you know, 
looked at his his blog before I wrote anything for him because he was writing his blog posts himself. So I took a look and and tried to figure out you know what he was looking for in a blog, what kind of content he wanted, and oh, was it painful to try and get through that blog post? And this is an attorney, right? He he has the strong writing skills. He knows his he's got a good vocabulary. He knows his way around the English language. But when it came to that blog post, it started out pretty strong, right? The the first paragraph or two started out really strong, but then it moved into the next paragraph, and he jumped from one subject to another seemingly completely different subject with no segue, no indication of how he got from point A to point B. It was very confusing. And if I had been a prospect, I would have clicked away and said, okay, thanks. I'm going to find what I need somewhere else because this is not helpful to me. The only reason I stuck around and read the whole blog post multiple times, I did eventually figure out what it was he was trying to say and how he got from point A to point B, but it was a real struggle. And the only reason I did it was because he was paying me to do it. Right. Again, if I had been a prospect, I would have clicked away and said, yeah, no, thanks. This is this is not helpful. As soon as you confuse your prospects or overwhelm them, they're just going to click away because no one likes to feel dumb and no one wants to work to try to figure out if they should hire you. Right. They they want it to be very easy. And there's always going to be someone out there who will make it very easy for them to find the information that they need to understand whether or not they need to buy a particular product or service. And if they do need to buy it, why they need to buy it. So if you're not making it as easy as possible, you're losing out on, 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 again, on that online visibility, on converting those leads who do find your website into customers. So back to my attorney friend, I went back to him and said, yes, I would love to write blog posts for you because I know I can do better than this. So I did, I took over writing blog posts for him. I would write about two to four blog posts per month for him. And after six months, he told me I had brought in $75,000 worth of business for his law firm, just through the blog posts I was writing for him. So if you don't believe blogging can work, I can direct you to him because he can tell you how much I, I helped grow his business for him. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that all on your own with some of the some of the key points you really need to touch on. And the very first one is know your target audience. Don't tell me you serve everyone. Don't tell me everyone needs your product or service. Don't even tell me that your small business, every small business owner or every business owner needs your product or service. I've been guilty of that myself saying, well, every, every business needs a blog. And yes, it's true that every business needs a blog, but there are certain niches that I serve, uh, particularly, again, attorneys, that's how I got started, and financial planners. I have found that I am really good at taking that really complicated information and turning it, not only making it easy for the average person to understand, but also just making it engaging. Um, I had another client, another attorney who once told me he does not know how I make such dry content sound so engaging and so interesting. And it's like, you know, that's why you pay me the big bucks <laughs> because that's my job. So wh what is your niche? What are you really good at that can serve a specific niche? Not all of the niches, not all of the people, not a huge swath of the market, but one niche because the more specific you can get, the more likely you are to show up in front of those people. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more as we get into keywords, but you got the short tail keywords and the long tail keywords and the long tail keywords. Again, they don't have as big of an audience, but when you focus on those and you target those long tail keywords, you're more likely to show up in searches because there are fewer, uh, uh, fewer competitors targeting that keyword. So you have less competition, so you're more likely to show up in searches. So the same idea applies to identifying your target audience. So that when you when you know who you're targeting and you make your content really super relevant to that specific group of people, they're going to be more likely to find you and again more likely to buy from you because you made your content really relevant to them and what they need. So you need to know where they're hanging out online. I do focus on blogging. I don't provide social media services, but when it comes to social media, I will say focus on one or two social media platforms that you know your audience is hanging out on and just master those one or two platforms so that you do it really well because otherwise you're going to stretch yourself too thin you're going to waste time on platforms that aren't going to get you any results because your target audience isn't there 
So where are they hanging out? What blogs or magazines or books are they reading? If you can find that out, you can put a guest blog up on someone else's website and that's a great way to expand your visibility and get in front of new people. So know where they're hanging out online and know what search terms they use. So you know what keywords you should be targeting in your content. What are their pain points? What keeps them up at night? What makes them go, oh, this is so frustrating. I just want someone to do this for me. Or I just wish I had this magic machine or software that would do this for me, right? Targeting those pain points and, and leading with that is what's going to really engage them and reel them in and make them want to work with you because you're, you've exemplified, you, you've shown that you understand their pain and you have a solution. Um, so start with that. And again, the pain point is likely to lead you to the search terms they're using because if they have a problem, they're looking for a solution to it, chances are good they're going to search something that will lead them to a solution. So know those pain points, know what problems you're solving for them, and really zero in on those pain points because that's, that's the emotion, right? We want someone to solve our problems for us. So if you can convince them that you're going to do that for them, they're going to buy from you. So the biggest problem I hear people complaining about why they don't blog is they don't know what to blog about. I get it. Even I get writer's block from time to time. It is a struggle. So when it comes to topic research, my very favorite tool is called Answer the Public. It's an online tool. You can just go to answerthepublic.com. They have a free version and a paid version. You get, I think, three searches per day with the, the free version, which is more than enough even for me, and I do it professionally. So um, if, if you're just doing it for yourself, I highly recommend just the free version. The paid version is awfully expensive, um, but it gives you a lot of really awesome information. So the idea is you put in a search term or a keyword. I usually start with one of the services that I provide and put that in as a search term, just one, two, maybe three words at the most. And to answer the public will generate the most commonly asked questions on the internet around that particular search term. So you've got the how, the can, the are, you've got a whole bunch of others. Um, it starts off when it initially loads, you'll see something that looks like this, which is very pretty, but you can't actually read it. So you click data and it will show up instead in um, segmented like this into the, again, the R's, the can's, the how's, and a whole bunch of other categories of questions. It generates tons and tons of questions you, that, again, it, people are entering into search terms online using whatever keyword you use. I think I used marketing strategy. That was my keyword here that I decided to search. So you can see that all of this is like, is marketing strategy important? Or can you execute marketing strategy? Or how marketing strategy is important? Or how marketing strategy helps in business, right? So these are all things that then I go and I do my keyword research. So keyword tool is different from Answer the Public. Answer the Public is not a keyword research tool. I use SERPstat. Uh, they are not paying me to promote them. I just really love SERPstat. Um, they're reasonably priced and they have the most accurate numbers. So the numbers you always wanna look at are the volume over here. This is the average number of searches per month. This is not total searches, average number of searches per month that this particular search term gets, right? So right now we've got 27.1 thousand searches per month, that's awesome. But if we go over here, the keyword difficulty, this indicates how difficult it is to actually show up in searches for that particular keyword. And you can see that it's always out of 100. So the closer you get to 100, the more difficult it's going to be to show up in searches for that particular keyword. So here we have 63 out of 100. That's very difficult to rank for. You don't even have a 50-50 shot, right? That only gives you a 37% chance of showing up in online searches, which is really not good. So you're going to want to target a different keyword. And one of the best ways to do that, to find another keyword that's kind of on the same topic, you can go back to the drawing board and go back to another product or service you provide, or go back to answer the public and look for other questions that you might want to use as a keyword. But I always love to look at the related keywords section right here, because you can almost always find something in here 
um, that has, again, still, these all have a high search volume, um, but maybe if you click through on one of them, you'll find a lower keyword difficulty. The CPC is the cost per click. So some of these, you know, strategy of marketing is a much lower CPC, so that's good. CPC is not related to keyword difficulty. CPC is, if you're doing paid ads, um, also known as PPC ads, pay per click, because again, cost per click, you're paying for each click. It's basically a, a, an auction, right? People will pay whatever they're willing to pay. So if you're up against some heavy hitters who really want to rank for a particular keyword, it might get awfully expensive. Um, other times it's, it's not so expensive. So, you know, we've got 219 for this one, but for strategy of marketing, it, it's down to 139. So that is only relevant if you are looking to pay for ads for that particular keyword, um, but it, it's something to look at. So I did go ahead and look for strategy of marketing, still a super high keyword volume, still 27.1K per month. Uh, CPC, at, like I said, is lower. Keyword difficulty, 38 out of 100. So you'll see that the, the color changed, right? Our 63 was a red, which means SERPstat is saying, no, 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 this is way too difficult, way too competitive. You don't want to try to rank for this. 38 is yellow. I think 38 is fine. Uh, that still gives you, you know, a 62% chance of showing up uh, in on the first page of Google for that particular keyword, which is really good. SERPstat likes uh, your keyword difficulty score to be 20 or 25 were below, um, and then that, that number will show up as green, which is, you know, green for go. Surf that is like, yep, yeah, nope, that's great, go for it. So that is a really low keyword difficulty score. It is, it's not impossible to find keywords that are, you know, still have a decent search volume, um, but that also have a keyword difficulty that is that low. It is possible, it's just going to take some extra searching. And again, when you search strategy of marketing, you'll see you have some slightly different related keywords that show up here. So you can continue playing around with these and, and see what shows up. So for example, examples of marketing strategies has a, um, a much lower search volume, but also a lower CPC. So it's always gonna be a balance between search volume and keyword difficulty. Not every keyword that you're gonna target is gonna have 27,000 searches per month. That is really high. It might have a few, you know, 3.6 thousand, like the examples of marketing strategies down there. Um, it might even be only a few hundred, depending on what your goals are. So keep that in mind because a few hundred searches or a thousand searches per month is how many people are looking for that search term every single month. So every month that's an opportunity for you to show up in those searches and get in front of more people who are looking for the stuff that you provide. So you've got all these awesome keywords. Uh, ideally, so you've got your target keyword, that's one. That is always going to go in a couple different places. Obviously it's gonna go throughout your content, but it should absolutely go in a few key places on your blog. So I picked one of my more recent blogs uh, just to pick on myself. My uh, target keyword for this blog was what is a SERP? SERP stands for Search Engine Ranking Position. So if you want to know what a SERP is, you can go to my blog and you can just type in this URL right here. It's right here. Um, so that's the other thing I did is I made sure that my URL is my target keyword right here. Um, this is also known as a meta tag, right? This, the title, meta tag, the URL, meta tag. If you have your, word, your website on WordPress, WordPress makes it super easy to go in and change your URL to whatever you want it to be. So make sure that it is your target uh, keyword. Otherwise, WordPress is just going to autofill it as your whole title. And there's nothing wrong with having your whole title here as the URL, but people are not necessarily searching this whole thing. They're, they're most likely searching what is a SERP. And uh, SEO. SEO by itself as a keyword is very difficult to rank for because obviously everyone is talking about SEO these days. So I would never use SEO as my one target keyword for a blog post, but I can combine it with an easier to rank for um, target keyword, which is what is a SERP, which is related to SEO. So that gives me a better chance of showing up in online searches. 
And then again, this star over here is next to my tag. So I just put in all these tags because this is what I want this to show up. These, this is another little meta tag, right? So I want it to show up in searches for content marketing, search engine marketing, SEO, SEO strategy. What is a SERP? Again, that target keyword shows up right here. Next up, you've got your images. So as of this recording, Google cannot yet re read images or video. It is working on it. So by the time you see this video, that might have changed. But instead, we've got this little alt text over here. This is what Google will read instead of the uh, paperclip. Um, by the way, what is the paid SERP? Again, what is a SERP? Remember, that was my target keyword for this blog post. So not only did it go in my main headline, it went in my little sub headline here because Google is going to read the headline. It's going to read the URL. It's going to read the sub headlines and it's going to read the alt text before it reads any of this other content. So yes, you should absolutely have all your keywords throughout your content, but you should also have it in these key places, your URL, your headline, your sub headlines, and then your little alt text over here. So pay per click is a really good keyword and it accurately describes this right here, right? It's, it's talking about pay-per-click, um, paying about talking about paid SERPs, paying to show up on the first page of Google, at the top of the first page of Google, all that good stuff. So whatever it is, whatever your keywords are, consider putting some of them in here when you've got those relevant images. Uh, longer blog posts are better. So uh, last I checked, the average blog post ranking on the first page of Google had an average length of 1,750 or 60 words, somewhere around there. That's really long. If you're writing it up in a Word document, single space, that would be about three and a half pages. It's a lot. So um, I've, talk, I've seen a lot of SEO experts who say they never write a blog post shorter than 2,000 or 3,000 words. I've seen other people say, yeah, we do some really long blog posts and some shorter blog posts. And some of the blog posts show up in searches. Some of the longer blog posts tend to not only show up in searches, but they get more engagement. So I, I hear this from a lot of people being like, well, I don't really read blog posts. I'm not going to sit and read something that's you know 2,000 words long. This is how long this blog post is that I wrote. It's 2,031 words long, right? I wanted to hit that 2,000 word mark. These days, I'm not so bent on the 2,000 word mark. Don't ever try to hit a word count just for the sake of hitting a word count. If you have 2,000 or 3,000 words to say on a particular subject, great, because Google and readers do love that in-depth content. Again, you're positioning yourself as an expert, right? So posting those ultimate guide style posts, those really in-depth posts that really cover everything there is to talk about with a particular topic from beginning to end, that's really gonna help you show up in those searches. And yeah, the data shows that people do spend more time engaging with that content. That said, people do skim. So again, go back to your, your little, uh, sub headlines here. Not only does Google love those, but people love those because, you know, they might want to know about a paid SERP. They might not want the whole definition of what a SERP is. They might not want to read all about what SERPs are, but maybe they do have a specific interest in a paid SERP. So having those sub headlines and those images makes it really easy for people to just skim your content. I know it's painful to think you put all of this time and energy into creating this awesome content and people don't even read it all the way through, they just skim it, but it's true. So again, like I was saying at the very beginning of this presentation, make it really easy for people to skim your content. The easier it is for them to skim, the more likely they're gonna be to find what they need and, and realize that again, you know, what it, you know what you're talking about and you have what it takes. So what I do with these, these really long 2,000, 3,000 word long blog posts is I'll put a little table of contents at the top where I list all of my subhead headings. And then each one has a link to that subheading. So at the top of this page, there's a little thing, you know, what is a paid SERP with a link to this. So that is it. That is everything that I wanted to talk to you today about how to get more out of your blog. Obviously, this is, this is just like the main points that you need to do. There's, there's a lot more that goes into 
SEO and blogging and, and making sure that you have really got what it takes to attract and engage and convert those leads online. But if you have any other questions, please reach out to me. I am at info at a B writing I blog for people who just don't want to do it themselves. I also have a blogging accountability group. It is a paid group on Facebook where at the beginning of every week I say, hey, what are your goals for the week? And then I give you tips and tricks and make sure that you're actually writing throughout the week. And then at the very end, I say, okay, it's the end of the week. <laughs> Did you accomplish those goals? Why or why not? So if, if you've been meaning to blog for your business, but you just haven't gotten that kick in the butt that you really need to, to get it done, I can help with that. So reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you all have an awesome day.